Hello everybody and welcome to this first installment of Inside the Mind of a Game Composer. This series, as the title suggests, will be a deep dive into my composition process. I'll show you everything interesting about the track, what I did, the decisions I made, why I did that and whatever else comes to mind. Today I want to talk about my piece Spires of Mana. It's a piece that is designed to be dynamic music, which means that there are gonna be different layers of intensity that can be blended and faded according to whatever the gameplay calls for. The first layer is basically a field track, which is pretty calm and just underlining whatever area you're in. Level nine is gonna be like all out boss music where I've basically thrown in everything I could find. And level 10 is another layer of intensity that ramps down the intensity again, so it acts kind of like a game over screen. The whole composition itself is based on all kinds of unusual instruments, I'd say. It's designed to have a vibe of mystical, maybe kind of Celtic, tribal. I've chosen all kinds of instruments that are not really usually used in different kind of instruments to convey this sense of tribalism. So this piece was composed for a friend of mine who needed music for a game university project and it was basically a one-on-one -on -one mage fight battle arena thing with all the mages having different classes, different spells and that kind of thing. In every level there was always a tower in the middle with a buff on top that you had to reach to power up obviously. And there was some type of water, lava, poison or whatever, quicksand maybe, depending on the level, rising from above. So the intensity was rising all the time because the level itself got smaller. I wanted to reflect that in the music so I decided for a dynamic piece of music for this. Which means the more this lava or whatever rises, the music can reflect that intensity depending on how far the fight is. Alright, now a little word from one of the developers of Spies of Mana. He was nice enough to film a little video that I can include here where he talks about some things from back then. Hi, I'm one of the developers from Spies of Mana. And our game is similar to other Battle Royale games. It's a four player multiplayer. Um, and the map size changes during, during the match. And we wanted the music in the background to fit to the current state of the match. So in an intense state, like when the, when the lava is really high up and there are only a few, let's say, islands left, we wanted some really intense combat music. And when the lava falls back down, we wanted also the music to reflect this change, so players immediately notice when the music changes that they know that uh, it's now less dangerous. So the storyline I had in mind for this piece was basically that of ancient tribes being locked in battle. There is a tournament every few years to decide which tribe is the strongest, and this tribe is then tasked to protect the spires of mana, which are basically the life source of the world. But in this tournament, it's not only good-willed people that participate. There were also some tribes that wanted to have the power of the Spires of Mana for themselves, so they could form the world to their image and kind of create their own utopia. You as the player can then decide, do you want to go for the good route, or do you want to go for the evil one? And yeah, it's basically a story of typical fights of good and evil. Alright, now it's time to dive right in, so follow me to the other cover perspective. Alright, here we are in the session and I'm gonna show you the first layer now. In the first layer, as I said, that's more of like the mystical field kind of thing and there we only have three elements. The whole thing starts off with the candela. No idea how to properly pronounce this, but I tried. <laughs> that's some sort of plucked instrument that we decided on. It was basically I met up with my friends who did the game project and we tried to find what kind of instruments could be the main one and we decided on the cantile. So that's a plucked instrument as I said and I'm gonna show you what we came up with and what it sounds like. Thank you. 
So that's the whole basic theme of the Cantela. And that's it basically for the Cantela. So the Cantela is actually doubled up with a Glockenspiel over it. Sounds like this. Which just gives a different kind of characteristic to the whole thing. Which makes it sound a bit more dreamy, a bit more mystical in my opinion. And it's basically playing the same thing that the Cantela plays with just this little embellishment at the end, which is just two more notes. So both of them together sound like this. So yeah, just a little soundscape that I like the composition of when it comes together. And the last thing in this first part, to complete this first part, is a Indonesian gamelan orchestra, which is just a, I guess, a combination of different metallic sounding percussion instruments, which I added in in a bit of a kind of random pattern, but I just played over it. Sounds like this. Didn't care too much where it actually sits, just a bit to have some random element in there as well. So the whole thing together sounds like this. Off to the second section, we got drums coming in as well as a choir right here and our first real melody instrument which is the first flute of quite a lot of more to come which is an Irish low whistle in that case. So what comes in first the whistle, just basically playing a harmony over the cantilever part. I dig the sound of that. Sounds mystical as well. Fits perfect. And a choir. That's a native instruments instrument which is the morph choir that I really like because you can change the articulation of what they actually sing between A, I, as you can see here, A, E, I, O, U, and I just it on something that sounds like a basic A. And you can also here change the chord and the scale. And the chord that it's supposed to play is a 1, 5, 8, which is basically just a power chord, but in a Locrian scale, which ends up with this sound. I think that sounds really cool, mystical as well, and fits. What I really like about this choir is that it's somewhere in the realm of Uncanny Valley, I'd say, because I really like to add choirs because they have like a human element to them. This one, not so much, since it's more of a synthetic kind of vibe, especially with the chords there. It is a human element, but not. then again, not really. So, I really like what it does to the composition. And as you could hear, also drums coming in. A bit more cinematic style drums. But without the really splashy, attacky high end, which to me makes them sound a bit more tribal. All right, on the subject of drums, in the third layer, the drums get a bit more intense. With just... Downbeats always on the second beat. Kind of a bit of a war march, I think, so beginning to get more intense. There's also another kind of percussive element coming in, which at the same time carries melodic meaning which is in that case something that sounds like a marimba but actually is not really a marimba. It's a African version of a marimba 
as you can hear here. So there's also this melon pumpkin fruit thing attached to it which acts as a resonator and gives it its characteristic sound. It sounds similar to Rumarima, Rumba, but not totally. This one actually sounds pretty tame because when you hear something like that in reality, it kinda sounds like it's got some distortion on it because the resonators themselves, they make some sort of distortion. I can't really explain it, but it sounds really cool. And that one is just a bit more tame, but I still like the sound of that. Something I like in particular about Mallet's percussion is they serve somewhere between a rhythmic element, a percussive element, as well as a melodic element. So you can ramp up the intensity quite a bit with stuff like this because it has a certain attack. You can go a bit more extreme with the attack with how many notes you choose and then it's a bit more stressful. For this one it's still kinda calm and stays throughout the whole composition, but for a different composition I'll be talking about at some other point, I did play around with marimba there as well, which acts more as like a tempo element as well. So the whole third layer sounds like this. Moving on to layer 4, not too much is changing. There is more percussion coming in. Which adds just a little bit more intensity to the whole thing. I'm just gonna loop that. And another instrument that sounds similar to a balafone, actually a gourd marimba, is added to. Basically the balafone is also a gourd marimba, but this one is just a different sound. So on its own, that's what it does. It kind of plays a playful harmony over the balafone, <laughs> that's what it's called. And together, Together they form a interesting sound palette that I really enjoyed, especially like the harmonies together, they fit nicely. Because it sounds so playful, I really like that. Playful but still mystical. Moving on to the next layer, the intensity is gonna change quite a bit. Let me give you the example. that you're probably gonna hear right away. One of them, of course, let me loop that again. One of them, of course, more drums, as you can hear. Which would be this layer. Which adds quite a lot of intensity, I'd say. Then the other thing that's probably pretty easy to hear is the choir. Which is that. A male and a female choir that is supposed to sing something? <laughs> I actually just chose some random Latin sounding words and that's what came out. This is supposed to mimic more of this human character because there's actually a human voice singing this and less of like a creepy vibe. It's really like more of a tribal chanting. This is basically making some sort of different language that we can't understand. That was the whole point of basically choosing random words. And they carry quite a bit of melody as well. And the other thing that comes in are these bell sounds. So that's a mixture of tula bells mixed with plate bells. And that's just an easy fix to make anything sound epic. From something like this, like kind of a tribal composition, all the way to probably EDM, 
and it really works well in metal as well. I've used it quite a bit in a few metal compositions as well. Great, really great, I love that. Just an easy fix to make something sound epic. So this level actually marks the first one with some low-end information. And when you think of tribal, you're probably not really thinking too much of low-end, so what instrument could we use? There is only one answer, so obvious. Of course a didgeridoo. I didn't just stumble upon that looking for my libraries by chance. I had that in mind. Anyway, the didgeridoo is a pretty cool part of this part. Because on one hand, obviously it adds some low end, and also it has a certain kind of beat that I think is cool. And I've also left a lot of these tracks kind of raw in a way, so I didn't quantize them perfectly, most of them. So just to have a bit of a more chaotic and more human vibe in this whole thing. So the didgeridoo sounds like that. I really like the vibe that this thing does, especially because it has a certain kind of drum beat style beat going on as well, that I think really serves the whole thing. And this last note that just goes on for longer and then changes like the whole kind of vowel sound of the whole thing, I really enjoy that. So whole thing again. Moving on to layer 6, not too much changes, there's just small things. First, there is a harp as well as a xylophone coming in, playing the same thing together. So basically the xylophone just adding more texture to the harp, which plays this. And this thing kind of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts. I think I kind of got the idea, probably somewhere from there, because it has a certain Hollow Bastion vibe to it, don't you think? I think it fits pretty cool in that. It's pretty low in volume in there as well, just to add a little bit of eeriness to the whole composition here. And the next thing that also comes in in this part is a bit more drums to just make the whole thing sound a bit more intense. So there's just a few hits, always in between. All right, so moving on to part seven that I've foolishly labeled most epic back then because I think in the original composition, this was actually the last piece of this whole piece and as you can hear there is quite a lot of things coming in. The first things that you probably notice the most is this plucked sound thing which is which is this canoon here. So that canoon is like an oriental middle eastern kind of plucked instrument as you can hear and what it does it kind of rolls into the chords there, so kind of like a piano or a guitar player rolling into these chords, just to add a bit more movement to the whole thing as well. What also comes in is a whole array of different flute sounds. So, we start off with a Ne flute. Actually, there's two Ne flutes. Let's start off with the other one. So first we get this Ne flute. And as you can hear, a few of these notes probably sound a little detuned to your ears, because it kind of is. These are not tuned to like our equal temperament system, the one that we are used to in the Western world, but it's tuned to a more Middle Eastern scale, which is called... Uh, I'm so gonna butch that. Hikachar? Hikachar? This. And this scale has a few notes detuned to just sound more Middle Eastern, because that's what they do there. Then I also added in a second Ne flute from a different company, a different sample library, 
just to have a bit more variation, a bit more sonic quality, and it actually also plays a different thing. So all these flutes play something slightly different, but are actually sometimes pretty different, but also similar enough to each other that it makes sense that they play together. So the second lay flute plays this. So a lot more breathy, I'd say, but it's in our tuning system. So this one is equal temperament-ish, I'd say. And the next flute I added in was a pan flute. Sounds like this. Pretty sure you heard that before. And a pan flute is an interesting one to me because if anyone of you have heard of the game Golden Sun, they use it quite a lot there. It's an old Game Boy game that I played since my early childhood, basically. And this bottle blow sound, as they I think called, I think it was called bottle blow, or maybe it was called pan flute. But that sound just stuck with me for such a long time. And this is probably the reason why it ended up in this composition. So all three flutes together. Where is it? Or actually, all four flutes together if we count the Irish whistle as one. Well. It sounds pretty chaotic, but this is exactly what I was going for. To me, this sounds like a few different people in a tribe kind of jamming together. So they're somewhere in the same musical realm, but all play something a bit different. And what they always share is this... This little embellishment thing they always have going. So, so much for the array of flutes that make the whole thing kind of chaotic, but I really like what it does. And one last thing that comes into play in this layer is, well, a tie gong. Come on, play it. I added this in because I wanted to. I kind of feel it has just the smallest impact, but I like what it does. You can barely hear it, but it does something. It is there, buried slightly, but I think it still has a bit of an impact. So next one to come, obviously layer 8, which I've foolishly labeled Final Showdown, because as you can guess, it's not. <laughs> but that's just what happens when you set markers. And this one is probably my favorite when it comes to what is added, because you're gonna hear. I just love that. That shouting choir was such a cool thing to find. It's the first thing I'm gonna show you. So it's that. Six layers of shouting choir. So first we got a few man shouting, sounding like this. Mixed together with some altos, so women. Going like this. Then some more man, some basses. Doing this. And some boys as well. Some sopranos. And also some tenors. Yeah. One thing I gotta say, soloing them out and having a few women, men and boys just basically moaning at me was a mixture of totally funny and really weird. I mean, this... Let's just keep it as a whole choir and not listen to them solo anymore. So I really like what this choir adds to the whole thing. Because this, to me, could either be like war shouts when going into battle, or this could be like the bloodlust of an audience that really wants to see these final contestants kill each other. This is such a cool, creepy human vibe to the whole thing without actually 
I mean, it's just noise. There is no real singing content in this, but this is exactly why I think it's creepy, because it doesn't give any melodic context, but it's just this human nature bloodlust kind of thing that goes on. I think it adds just something really cool to this composition. Some weird faces to go with that. Alright, moving on. I've added some more plucked instruments. Once the culto. Kind of a harpish sounding instrument. A Japanese instrument. And the shamisen. Which sounds like this. Pretty sure if you've ever played any Japanese games before, I'm sure you've heard that somewhere. Because that is another traditional Japanese element that I've added in. And as you can hear, I've tried to, for once with this little embellishment thingy, I've tried to convey like a connection with the flutes, because that's also this playful vibe. And also this last run right here. I really tried to add something that sounds, at least to my ears, kind of Japanese. And since these are traditional Japanese instruments, I thought that would be a cool thing to add in there as well. And as you've probably noticed, there is another layer of drums coming in as well, to ramp up the intensity some more, which would be that. So all drums together, sound like this right now. Oh yeah, I didn't show you the thunder drums that came in before. They sound a bit more weak and less epic than the others. And they have more like of a kind of wet slap thing to it, which sounds kind of organic to me. So I like what it adds to the whole thing as well, even though it's pretty low in the whole drum mix. Speaking of Japanese instruments, I've added another Japanese, a traditional Japanese instrument in there. Since I didn't have enough flutes, I thought I'd just add another one. Which is the shakuhachi. This one. Pretty sure you've heard that one before. And what makes this one stand out compared to the other flutes is once it sounds really breathy. I like what that does. And as you can hear this... That kind of thing. I really like what this adds, because that's another one of these kind of human elements. So it's totally overblown and creates some really cool sonic textures, in my opinion. Moving on to layer 9, which is the highest intensity one, and the second to last one. And as I said, layer 10 is to quiet everything down again, so this one is the most intense one. I've decided to add in another. Shamisen, as you're gonna hear, which, which is playing a constant rhythmic pattern to just ramp up the movement of the whole thing a bit. Let me find it real quick. There it is. Also, little embellishments with kind of a nod to the flute theme and another Japanese sounding ending riff right there, if you can call that a riff. And for one more really different sonic quality to the whole song, I decided to add something that resembles strings. But I couldn't just take, I mean, I could have just taken regular strings, but that would kind of go against this whole tribal vibe again. Which is why I chose traditional Chinese strings. In that case, once we get the sarangi. With a totally different melody right there. Oh, sorry. The sarangi is actually an Indian instrument, not a Japanese one. And this instrument is supposed to mimic the human voice, so... And I think it does a pretty good job at that, because that actually sounds like a wailing... sad, kind of, human voice, human singing, so I really dig the vibe that this adds. 
And the thing that I wanted to show you before, I've mistaken this, this is why I've mistaken this for the Chinese instrument, is an actually a Chinese instrument, which is the Erhu, which is a two stringed Chinese bowed instrument, which has another really distinct and different sound. And together with the Sarangi, just adds a really interesting sonic texture, I think. And to round up this barrage of new instruments and new sound textures coming in, I've decided to use a duduk, which is actually a Middle Eastern wind instrument. That sounds like this. And I've added this upward motion weird thing to just add another layer of a weird sonic texture. Buried pretty low in there. But it's just a little thing that adds a little more texture. And as I've mentioned before, the layer 10 is gonna ramp down the intensity again. And just gonna be left with three instruments. You're gonna hear that now. So, what we've got left is the Glockenspiel. So really lovely, but also creepy, because what it plays doesn't really sound... It's a mixture, it's just another bit of this eeriness that it adds. Because it's not pleasant per se, I'd say, but it's not really scary. It's again in this middle ground of kind of uncanny, I'd say. And then we got the Celesta, Celesta playing as well. So the Celesta actually plays the line that the Contela always played. So the main theme kind of. And the Glockenspiel. The Glockenspiel plays what the choir sang. Not the Shana choir obviously, but the other one. And then the last element we got in here is an ocarina. This ocarina plays at just very very low dynamic range and just adds a little bit of breathy eeriness to end the whole thing. And this is actually where the composition ends. So from layer 9 back to layer 10. From the biggest one down intensity. And this is where the composition actually ends. Alright, thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun for me to make, so I hope you enjoyed it too. I'm planning on doing this for a few of my other compositions as well, so if you enjoyed it and want me to cover something in particular, just go and let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to incorporate it in the next video. Special thanks to Thomas and the rest of the Spires Mana team, as well as to Armin Amano, who did the beautiful, beautiful cover artwork for this. He's got a YouTube channel now as well, so head on over there and check it out. He's a really awesome photographer who does travel diary now, I'd say, with lots of dangerous stuff in there as well, and I do the music for that. So head on over there, it's gonna be worth it. If you want me to score your game, just send me a message on Facebook or Instagram, and we can talk. Alright, thanks again for watching, see you next time, see ya bye!